name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. In our first reading today, we continue to hear more about Moses and uh, leading God's people, the people of Israel, through the desert towards the beauty of that promised land. As we come together this evening, uh, this morning, we too are making our pilgrim way through, through this life, confident that Jesus himself is leading us towards the beauty of that promised land of heaven. So let's turn to him again and seek that mercy that he offers for those who turn astray from him. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. You come in word and sacrament to strengthen us and make us holy. Christ, have mercy. You will come again in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Draw near to your servants, O Lord, and answer their prayers with unceasing kindness, that for those who glory in you as their creator and guide, you may restore what you have created and keep safe what you have restored. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Numbers. The sons of Israel, the whole community, arrived in the first month of the desert of Zid. The people settled at Kadesh. It was there that Miriam died and was buried. There was no water for the community, and they were all united against Moses and Aaron. The people challenged Moses. We would rather have died, they said, as our brothers died before the Lord. Why did you bring the assembly of the Lord into this wilderness, only to let us die here, ourselves and our cattle? Why did you lead us out of Egypt, only to bring us to this wretched place? It is a place unfit for sowing. It has no figs, no vines, no pomegranates, and there is not even water to drink. Leaving the assembly, Moses and Aaron went to the door of the tent of meeting. They threw themselves face downward on the ground, and the glory of the Lord appeared to them. The Lord spoke to Moses and said, Take the branch and call the community together, you and your brother Aaron. Then, in full view of them, order this rock to give water. You will make water flow for them out of the rock and provide drink for the community and their cattle. Moses took up the branch from before the Lord as he had directed him. Then Moses and Aaron called the assembly together in front of the rock and addressed them. Listen now, you rebels. Shall we make water gush from this rock for you? And Moses raised his hand and struck the rock twice with the branch. Water gushed in abundance, and the community drank, and their cattle too. Then the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, Because you did not believe that I could proclaim my holiness in the eyes of the sons of Israel, you shall not lead this assembly into the land I am giving them. These are the waters of Meribah, where the sons of Israel challenged the Lord, and he proclaimed his holiness. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Oh, that today you would listen to his voice, harden not your hearts. 
So that today you would listen to his voice. Harden not your hearts. Come, ring out our joy to the Lord. Hail the God who saves us. Let us come before him giving thanks. With songs let us hail the Lord. So that today you would listen to his voice. Harden not your hearts. Come in, let us bow and bend low. Let us kneel before the God who made us, for he is our God, and we, the people who belong to his pasture, the flock that is led by his hand. So that today you would listen to his voice. Harden not your hearts. Oh, that today you would listen to his voice. Harden not your hearts as at Meribah, as on that day at Massah in the desert, when your fathers put me to the test, when they tried me, though they saw my work. Oh, that today you would listen to his voice, harden not your hearts. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord is faithful in all his words and loving in all his deeds. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he put this question to his disciples. Who do people say the Son of Man is? And they said, some say he is John the Baptist, some Elijah, and others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. But you, he said, who do you say I am? Then Peter Simon Peter spoke up. You are the Christ, he said, the Son of the living God. Jesus replied, Simon, son of Jonah, you are a happy man, because it was not flesh and blood that revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. So I now say to you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church and the gates of the underworld can never hold out against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth shall be considered bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall be considered loosed in heaven. Then he gave the disciples strict orders not to tell anyone that he was the Christ. From that time, Jesus began to make it clear to his disciples that he was destined to go to Jerusalem and suffer grievously at the hands of the elders and the chief priests and the scribes, to be put to death and to be raised up on the third day. Then, taking him aside, Peter started to remonstrate with him. Heaven preserve you, Lord, he said. This must not happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are an obstacle in my path because the way you think is not God's way, but man's. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. It's not exactly clear from the text what it was that Moses and Aaron did to offend the Lord uh, so that he said, because you haven't believed, uh, I'm not going to let you enter the promised land. It might be because they said, 
to the people, do you not believe that we can make water gush forth from this rock? Maybe they were giving the impression that it was through their own efforts and power and uh, whatever that they were making the water come forth, not God's. Some people suggest it's because Moses taps the rock twice, whereas God only asked him to tap the rock. Maybe the second time was because he, he doubted that once would be enough. Who knows? In any case, the Lord had a very high standard of, of Moses and Aaron, perhaps higher than the, the, the people because he'd chosen them to, to be the leaders. And we find that Moses won't enter the promised land. He'll get to see it. He'll get to see it in its beauty and in all its glory from the top of one of the mountains in the desert, but he won't enter himself. And yet, we do believe that Moses will have been led by Jesus himself into the, that other eternal promised land, which we call heaven. On the 4th of September in the Byzantine Rite, they celebrate the feast of, of Moses. Jesus, the one who came to save the living and the dead to raise them up to new life, to lead them through this earthly wilderness to the joys of heaven with milk and honey flowing, with living streams, and green pastures, and an eternal banquet set out before us. Peter believed that Jesus was the Messiah, the Christ, the one who came to set his people free, even if he didn't really understand what that meant, as we find out when he challenges uh, Jesus and uh, when Jesus talks about the suffering and, and the cross. Let's pray that as we gather today, we can recommit our belief in Jesus, in his desire and his power to save his people and to lead us safely home. Let's bring before the Lord all those prayers that we carry in our hearts this morning. Let's continue to pray for those who are poorly, especially Patrick Sullivan and Kathy Wade and Dorothy Beatty. And for those who've died recently, remembering especially Steve Williams and Mark Thompson and Sister Antonietta. Let's pray too as I offer this Mass for the dead and founders. Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon them. May they rest in peace. Amen. May their souls and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. And we ask Mary, our, our blessed Mother and Queen of Heaven, to pray with us and for us as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Loving Father, we turn to you once more. Trust in your desire to 
Help us reach safely the shores of heaven, led by your Son, Jesus, through whom we make these prayers. For he lives and reigns forever and ever. Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, for through your goodness we've received the wine we offer you, the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed to you, Lord God, of all creation, for through your goodness we've received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my sisters and my brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Graciously sanctify these gifts, O Lord, we pray, and accepting the oblation of this spiritual sacrifice, make of us an eternal offering to you, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, creator of the world and source of all life. For you never forsake the works of your wisdom, but by your providence are even now at work in our midst. With mighty hand and outstretched arm, you led your people Israel through the desert. Now, as your church makes her pilgrim journey in the world, you always accompany her by the power of the Holy Spirit and lead her along the paths of time to the eternal joy of your kingdom through Christ our Lord. And so, with the angels and saints, we too sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who loved the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love and when as once for the disciples, so now for us he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit 
to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Saviour, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again. And we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. And so, having called us to your table, Lord, confirm us in unity so that together with Francis, our Pope, and Philip, our Bishop, with all bishops, priests, and deacons, and your entire people, as we walk your ways with faith and hope, we may strive to bring joy and trust into the world. Remember our brothers and sisters who've fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There, in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, with St. Peter, St. Thomas, St. Stephen, the Winchester martyrs, St. Gregory, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours, for ever and ever. At the Saviour's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's offer each other some sign of peace.
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Company with constant protection, O Lord, those you renew with these heavenly gifts, and in your never failing care for them, make them worthy of eternal redemption. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you and your loved ones, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Thanks be to God.